Hi, welcome to our weekly Word of the Week from Christ Church St. James, Etobicoke, West Toronto, where we connect with many of our friends who are associated with this congregation, but also with many of our new friends and a whole lot of old friends, uh, dear friends right across the country so and beyond. So it's a real treat just to share a little bit, uh, share a word in prayer, share a word in song, and share a word from the word all in a, all in a very short span of time. So I hope this might be a word of encouragement to you today. On this day, um, on the calendar year, we're celebrating what's known as Epiphany. And uh, people remember when the wise men or the Magi came and presented their gifts to Jesus. And of course, to have an Epiphany means to have an aha moment, doesn't it? When the light goes on. So a little song that was written by a friend of mine down in St. Stephen, New Brunswick, many years ago, Peter Fitch. Uh, um, I hope he doesn't mind me singing his song. But I... I... Late at night before I sleep My thoughts have often turned To the manger child and the wise men Who followed the star that burned I've often wondered what I would bring if the angels beckoned me To come and see The glorious child Born to die to set men free I could not bring him gold I could not bring him wealth Baby Jesus I will try to bring to you myself Baby Jesus, don't you cry There's more ahead than pain For when you see the ones you love Then you will live again I could not bring you gold I could not bring you wealth Baby Jesus I will try To bring to you Myself Want to sing that with me? I could not bring you gold I could not bring you wealth Baby Jesus, I will try to bring to you myself. Yeah. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for that little song by Peter. And I do pray that as a, as a result of even our few minutes right now together, we will find ourselves just wanting to bring ourselves to you which just means to offer ourselves to you um, with no strings attached. So please, God, use this time. Speak into our lives. Amen. Little word of the week. Here it is. Now, I say a little word of the week. It looks like a big word of the week, but hang in there with me. The word of the week is from 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verse, 13, verse 16 and 17, but I'm really only going to focus on verse 17. So, But here's the preamble to verse 17. All scripture is inspired by God, okay, and is useful to do what? To teach us what is true, okay, <laughs> to make us realize what is wrong in our own lives. Okay, I need that. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right, dot, dot, dot. Here we go. Why? So that those who belong to God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Okay? So, can I get a handle on this? 
So scripture, what are you all about? What's the big deal about the Bible? Here's the big deal about the Bible. So those who belong to God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. All right, I'm going to try to unpack this real quick, and I hope it sticks with you, and uh, maybe even in a deeper way than it does with me. Here it is. What's the big deal about the Bible? Number one, to show you and me what it means to belong to God, how we might belong to God. I think the, the longing of all of us is for a sense of belonging. We long to belong. My favorite word, by the way, and some of my friends know this, my favorite word in the Bible is the word belong. There's, is there anything worse than just being left out and wondering if anybody gives a hoot? If anybody would even care if you just died? I've met people recently who voiced that to me, literally believing that nobody would care. Heartbreaking stuff to hear that kind of thing. And other people just feel like they just don't fit. That, Well, the wonderful news is the invitation of the gospel is you are invited to fit. There's a place for you, just for you. If you like, there's a chair with your name on it at the table. Um, so the Bible shows us what it means to belong. And the big fancy word is the word salvation, which has, it's, it's, it's a deep word, by the way, it's not cheap, it's not shallow. It has to do with, with wholeness. And, um, but it has to do with belonging. It's an it's a invitation word. Uh, the same way we appreciate being rescued when we're in danger, likewise, it's a rescue word. Rescue so we can be long to God. Um, and many verses might come to your mind already. That those who receive Christ, those who believe in his name, he gave them the power or the right to become a child of God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's the invitation to belong. To be saved is to belong. To know that you matter that God wants you, that God loves you. Isn't that something? And that Jesus gave his life to prove that God loves you and that God wants you. So how do I know that? Because the Bible tells me that. So all scripture is inspired by God. So I will know what it means. The invitation is there. I can, it's up to me now whether I respond. I mean, right now, for instance, you have every right to turn this video off. And you may, maybe some people already have. <laughs> but the video is an invitation to listen. God gives us an invitation to listen to him. So the big word there, salvation. The second thing, why? What's more than that? May be complete. And that big word would be the word sanctification. That means to become more like. So if belonging is something to celebrate, and it is, becoming is also something to celebrate, and it is. To become more like the one who gave his life for us. To become more like Jesus. The fruit of the Spirit is, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, meekness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. To become more like the one who loves us. To become the person, for you and for me, that we're actually meant to be the people that we want to be. We don't want to be, you know, we don't want to fool around with life and just mess up life and just kind of joke our way. We want to be real. We want to be authentic. We want to be people who other people can look to and rely upon and trust. All of those things. So the scriptures teach us how to become complete. What to say no to. What to say yes to. What to cast off. What to put on. Tremendous, isn't it? That's why we need to be deep in the scriptures on a daily basis and to meditate upon the scripture and say, okay, Lord, what does the scripture say? What does the scripture mean? And what will my life look like if I take it seriously? All right, third thing, thoroughly equipped for every good work. And I would just, for the sake of alliteration, use the word service there. We have the word salvation, the word sanctification, and the word service, thoroughly equipped, who's ready to serve. So belonging, becoming, and being ready, being ready, or being real, if you like. Just a real response. 
equipped for every good work. That means when you, you feel the way God feels, you begin to see the way Jesus sees. Not just the way you would normally see, but something deeper. You begin to feel the way Jesus feels for people and situations and the crisis. And as a result, you're ready to roll up your sleeves. Here I am, send me. How can I be of help, Lord? How can I be of service? How can I be real in this situation? How can I really make a difference in this situation? The scriptures begin to teach us how we can actually roll up our sleeves. So I think it's a great way for us to begin this new year, just celebrating those three wonderful things. The scriptures are given to us. Why? So those who belong to God, number one, will know what it means to belong to God. What a great thing to begin this year knowing that you belong to God. You're not a, you're not a missing piece of a puzzle. You are right in, you, you've got a place just for you to fit. You count. Isn't that good? I hope you're hearing that today, somebody. You count. You count. Be complete, sanctified, becoming more and more like the person you really want to be. And the person you really want to be is the very best you can be for God and the very best you can be for those around you. Isn't that right? No room for selfishness and stuff like that here. No room, right? Just to be the best for Jesus, which means being the best for the world, by the way. So we can do what? So we can be thoroughly equipped, ready to serve. Real, a real response to the real world around us. So I share that word with you, hoping it stays with you. I hope it stays with me too. Um, and I'll just, my little PS is this. I've been kicking around in ministry for 46 years. Kind of shows on my face, I guess. But um, those three words have helped shape my understanding of ministry. I want everybody to know what it means to belong to Christ. I want everyone to know what it means to become more and more like Jesus. And everybody to know what it means to live in the way that Jesus lived. In other words, to serve. So I pray in Jesus' name that those words, that might be an epiphany for somebody. The light may go on. Let's just pray together. Father, I've spoken really quickly, but your word speaks deeply. And your word speaks into our hearts. So I would pray in the name of Jesus that even this word today, will find a place in our heart and will shape who we are and how we live this coming year. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you deeply.